Hello, I'm Bill Harris. Welcome to Life Questions, a program designed to give you a biblical perspective on the many questions about life. This is a show that answers your questions about the Bible, our world, and our culture. And on today's show, we're going to dive right into the topic of your past. How do you overcome the negative things in your past? Also, we're discussing truth. What is truth? To answer these questions, we have assembled a panel of local ministers to address your questions that you have sent us and to uh, provide biblical answers for. So let's meet them. They are Pastor Dale Booker of Lima First Assembly, Pastor Wayne Bradley of I Can Ministries of Lima, Ohio, Pastor Mark Bird of Revive Ohio, former pastor of the First Heavy Metal Church of Christ in Greensville, and finally, Pastor Neil Whitney of the church at Allentown. Gentlemen, we welcome you to our program today. Happy to have you with us. Thank you. I hope I didn't, did I mispronounce it? It's, it's Greenville, right? I think I said Greensville, but it's Greenville. Okay, we've got that straight. So let's move into our first topic today. We're going to be discussing uh, how to overcome the negative things in your past. Uh, and this, it, it may seem like it's a simple thing, but there are a lot of people who have done a lot of terrible things in life and they're very serious about serving the Lord, wanting to be of service to Him, but have struggles overcoming their past. And I would dare say the devil enters into this to make people think, well, you ought to be glad they just let you into that church, you know, let alone do something. Uh, and that, that, that shame and that stigma can hang on when the Lord says, it's taken away, there's no condemnation. Mm -hmm. So how do we minister to people who are struggling with the things of their past? Who wants to dive into that first? I think uh, the first thing that comes to my mind, Bill, is uh, if God truly forgives us, and the Bible says that He casts our sins as far as the east is to the west. And uh, on a, in a perfect world, if you have a globe, you cannot go north to south without going south. But east to west, you can never go Amen. the opposite direction. Amen. And so if God casts our sins that far away, He remembers them no more, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So if God doesn't remember them anymore, why should we? As long as we've repented and turned from that and ask God for forgiveness, He truly does forgive. So is it a matter then of that person that feels that they can't get over their past, a matter of them changing their mindset to say, well, God has forgiven me, why can't I forgive myself? Is, is that what it is? I believe so. I believe it is changing our minds and focusing on what the Word says about us, mm -hmm. right? And focusing on that and not focusing on the negativity or what the devil reminds us because he's so good at reminding us of our past and getting us to dwell on the past. Mm -hmm. every, every one of us around this table and, and those watching, uh, everyone has a regret. It sure. doesn't matter who you are. Sure. Everyone has a regret. And if we're not careful, we'll spend more time trying to maintain the file system of those regrets. Mm -hmm. And when, when we do that, we're getting our eyes off of him and onto okay. these things. And therefore, we get stuck. We get yes, stuck. And, and sometimes we get stuck living in the past. And Philippians addresses this, that we are to forget what is behind and strain towards what lies ahead. And uh, w one of my mentors, uh, Pastor James Allen, always said this, that you can't change your past, but God can help you change your interpretation of mm. that past. Mm. I know Pastor James. Uh, Hallelujah. Yes, sir. He spoke when he was pastor of the Assemblies of God over there at uh, Day Spring. Yes, sir. When he was Day Spring. Praise God. And then I also know him from Winebrenner Theological Seminary, a man yes. of great wisdom. Yes, sir. Great wisdom. And if he said that, I got, I got to believe that. Yes, sir. Because it's, 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 it's a matter of accepting what Christ has told us and what the Bible has told us, is it not? Mm -hmm. And then some people would say, well, then how do I come to grips with that? I would guess it's a matter of reading it for yourself, huh? We know Romans 12 says that we're not supposed to be conformed to the image of the world. Mm -hmm. That can also mean don't conform to the image you think the world has of you. Amen. Oh, that's Amen. good. Amen. Ah. Amen. That's Amen. good. But be transformed by the renewing Amen. of your Amen. mind, Amen. recreating your yes. past. Yeah, that's and the that's, renewing of your mind, yes. Amen. And that's something that, um, <clears throat> that I was thinking as well, you know, because this thing that's inside of me is where change starts. But so often my actions are predicated upon the external factors around me, 
Uh, the past is to me a place to return to, um, but not a place to live. Because that, that past is also oftentimes a place where God can use you. He'll take you back to those places and, and help you to reach the unreachable. Mm -hmm. Because at one point you were the unreachable. That's right. And your past it was not your past. It was your present at that time. And then and, and we talk about the devil, how he always reminds us of our past. But we need to remind him of his future. Oh, that's good. You know, we need to make sure he knows. And we, we're telling him because for so long we've been telling this lie that he's put in our head. But now we need to tell him that we know the truth today. And we know that there's no future living in the past. That's right. So, but there is a ministry that can be birthed from the pain of the past, from the things that have happened. Because there's some people that will never hear the gospel of Jesus Christ unless Mark Bird tells them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And no matter how I try to tell them, they won't hear me. But they'll hear you, Neil. They'll hear you, uh, mm -hmm. Pastor Booker, and, and you, Bill. They'll well, that's hear. Re relatability can build Amen. relationships. Yeah. Hallelujah. We speak mm -hmm. that language, man. Mm -hmm. Speak the language of salvation. Yeah, you know. I gotta think too that a part of uh, overcoming the past has to be not going back into those situations, not going back to yeah. be with those old buddies who were influencing you in in those former ways. Mm -hmm. Would not would that not be a part of it too? Yeah, mm -hmm. not going back to do the same things over right, and over right. again. Right, and but, I'm not talking about you being, and the witnessing yeah, aspect. But, but yeah, please go back for delving into the sin. But even in the witnessing, our, our word tells us to be careful. Right. You know, we got to be careful because we'll go back into this thing and do the same things that we've done before. Mm -hmm. I like where we talk about where two or more are gathered, he's there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if we go, if, if me and Mark have the same issues with a situation and we're going to join together in the Holy Spirit to walk back into a situation to help someone else we better take the holy spirit with us mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. both of us together we can fall together yeah, you, yeah. Walk gently. you know mm -hmm. we can fall together so mm -hmm. I, I just believe that the past is a valuable thing uh in in helping to get people to a place where they no longer live in it mm -hmm. you know i just believe that i believe that god has equipped each of us to go somewhere mm -hmm. and, and it's usually back to those places that we say we'll never go to again and uh, i i think another part too to overcome the past is by virtue of your testimony, how oh, God has yeah. brought you out of it oh, and you God. are verbally confessing, not the past, but I, well, well, in a sense expressing the past, but expressing how you have overcome the past. How God has brought you out. How God right. has brought well, you out. Amen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And amen. Uh, being taught what an important aspect that is to give that part of your testimony because it, it, it drives another nail in the, that old coffin. Right in the on. past, doesn't it? Amen. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. And Jesus said he wants us to be overcomers. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you have to be able to speak to that, right? Yeah. To, to actually be free. To yes. be free from that, you speak that, right? That I'm an overcomer because of what he did. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, this is a bit touchy, but the, the question we got from a viewer talks about, in this situation, talks about uh, trying to overcome when they go back into the church because although he or she may have overcome, they're dealing with people who know of the past and may not hesitate to bring it up. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you do in a circumstance like that? Well, I think that uh, you have to walk it out. That's what I believe it is. And walk so it out. You me. walk it out. In other words, Whatever is true and in your heart and where you are with the Lord, you have to walk that out, right? And let your testimony, let your life be the testimony of you being an overcomer now. And, and sometimes that takes time because mm -hmm. there are consequences to our sin. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, we have to have that. But the truth is, if we want to be an overcomer, we have to be able to walk it out and live mm -hmm. a life worthy of that repentance, mm -hmm. Paul says. I think many times what happens is, is we, we hold other people, we see something or we even hear something that someone did. And we, it's almost like we take a Polaroid shot. This is them. It's like a right. mug shot in the spiritual Amen. realm. And then we hold them to that. Yes. Yes. And it's almost like, cannot, can't, can't God cause them to change? Can't they change? And we hold them to something they, they did even 40 years sure. ago. They, sure. they hold them there. And I think for going back into the church, number one, you're going to have to learn to forgive yourself. Amen. And once you forgive yourself, um, 
you, you walk in his forgiveness as well, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But some people just can't get over something that you did. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I'm not saying for every situation, but maybe, just maybe, if someone else can't get over something that you did, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And Christ has forgiven you. You said it before, yeah, you know, he's cast it as far as the east is from the west. If they can't get up, maybe it's just time to move on because Christ has given us a new identity and set mm -hmm. us free. There's no reason to stay in the dungeon cell, even though he's unlocked it and opened up the door. Why dwell there? Amen. Take that and use that as a testimony to Amen. move forward. Nothing wrong with moving on, I guess. No, <laughs> no it is not. All right, so. very good. Uh, let's, let's go into another subject here. I was going to hold this until after the break, but I think we've exhausted that topic now. Um, the truth. You remember the incident where, where uh, Jesus was being interrogated by Pilate? And he was asking, he says, he says well, no, so you're the king of kings, huh? And, and Jesus said, well, uh, there are people who follow me, mm -hmm. and they follow me because I, I give the truth. Mm -hmm. And Pilate quipped, what is truth? But he never yeah. stuck around long enough to hear Christ's response. He just turned and went back to the crowd. He had the truth standing there right in front of him and didn't even know it. And so we have a situation today where people have distorted the truth. I mean, distort. And, and Paul knew this was coming. He said that man is suppressing the truth. They're holding it down. They're physically, deliberately holding it down so they can live the lie. Okay. Can you give me some examples of how people are living the lie, how they're suppressing the truth? And then let's take it from there uh, when we come back after the break. But right now, give me some examples. How, how is the truth being suppressed? Can you think of any examples? How is the truth? I'll, I'll lead off with, with, with some examples. What, uh, what, what God calls fornication, society calls free sex. What God calls uh, adultery, God, uh, the, the, the society now calls a, a relationship. Is Amen. Much better than Amen. Or, or sex between consenting adults. Yeah. What Amen. God calls perversion, society calls pornography. Mm -hmm. Or adult entertainment. Yes. See, it's, it's living a lie. Yes. And I think that a lot of that, I mean, if, <clears throat> for me personally, I think a lot of that is the fact that I have to be um, ready to look at my own self and my own life and say, what, what truth have I allowed to be uh, skewered in, in my lifetime, in my living, in my dealing every day with the people that God brings to me? What truth do I hedge upon? Where am I at on the whole spectrum of things? You know, because I think it's real easy for us to, like you said, to look at others and see where they're failing or what they need. But I think that also the greatest need that, uh, that I have is not with other people, it's with me and understanding that I need the same thing that everyone else needs, and that's more Jesus. You know, I need more and more so that I can be a better example. But what about those places in our lives where we're failing, where we're failing at, and we don't want to recognize that? What about those places that we uh, circumcise, if you will, in our lives, and we cut these things off or whatever, but there's still a level of, of insecurity, a level of, 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 of untruthfulness about our own walks, and then it's better, it's easier for us, I believe, to see those things in others because they're just glaring in us. So I think that life is a mirror and I think people are mirrors and I think God gives us just what we need to get us individually to a place of relationship with him. Very good, very well put. Let's hold on to that and when we come back, I wanna deal with semantics because I think in many cases, uh, the lie that is being perpetrated in the world has a, has a situation with semantics in it. And we'll uncover that in a few moments right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. Well, we're happy to have you back. And let's continue our discussion on truth. And the first thing I'd like for somebody to do around this table, define what truth really is. What is truth? How do you do? 
Well, John 17, 17, uh, red letters, Jesus speaking, said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Mm -hmm. So the Amen. word is truth. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Anybody else further to say about that? John 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And I think sometimes uh, because we'll, we'll want to do what we want to do, right, we'll suppress that truth and Amen. we'll push that down so that we can, you know, just feel good about what we're doing mm -hmm. and how we're living. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. And in John 16, uh, verse 13, uh, Jesus described uh, the Holy Spirit as being the spirit of truth. Yes. Amen. So that's another Amen. thing. And, and I like what you said, too, about suppressing the truth, because Paul in uh, Romans, the first chapter, talks about man suppressing the truth. Yeah. Uh, because of the lie. It's basically what somebody else just said about mm -hmm. so that you can do what you want to do. Amen. And that all that dovetails into the lie that's taking place, the big lie, which started in the garden. When, when, when the serpent brought doubt in Eve's mind yes. about what God had to say. How but but, is, but isn't truth relative? Haven't you heard that? Yeah, that's what they're <laughs> saying, isn't it? It's all relative now. You know? mm -hmm. um, situation ethics is another name they uh, give. Yes. Right. Situation yeah. ethics. Yes. It, it, it all depends on the situation that mm -hmm. you happen to be in at the time. Yes. Sometimes it may be right, sometimes it may be wrong. And I think it's further perpetrated by those kind of um, things that, like you just said, isn't it relative? Because in that place, then we can make it personal to just cover up our own stuff, um, you know, relative to what, to well, well, to what I believe. And then that becomes our truth, our mm -hmm. personal truth. And we know that that does us no good and anyone else that listens to us. And basically, we're going to just uh, fight over the truth quote unquote, because I have my truth because it's relative once again mm -hmm. to what I believe. So yours can be different. Yours can be different. And then and, and in the in the in the, um, in the in the in the form of just being we want to be all together. We want to get along. We do anything to get along. And so we just believe, OK, well, it's just not hurting us. Let them have their truth. We'll have our truth and we'll do this and they can do that. After all, this is the kingdom agenda. You know, everybody's got to do something different so that we're on the kingdom agenda. But the real kingdom agenda is living that, that truth that you guys just spoke about in scripture. There's not a lot of leeway and flexibility in what God calls truth. Mm -hmm. And I think it go goes back to what you said in the previous show last week, how that um, narrow is the way that, that man goes. And, and that's Amen. because by the time you bring up truth, a lot of people don't want to go down that no. narrow path. They'd rather Amen. take the broad path mm -hmm. because that's the one that's more popular. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, the word goes on to tell us that how okay. can a young man keep his way pure? Uh, by hiding that truth mm -hmm. within his heart. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. where there's an absence of the word, where there's an absence of the word that's been spoken or, or in a lifestyle, mm -hmm. you're going to have that confusion of what's Amen. true and what's Amen. not. When we, as a society, as a world, don't want to accept truth, mm -hmm. it, there's no middle ground. The lie comes in mm -hmm. to fill that void, does it mm -hmm. not? Yeah. And yeah. then it leads us down that path of the law. It does, Bill. I'm reminded, uh, John 8, 32, mm -hmm. when you know the truth, Hallelujah. the truth will, will set, set you free. free. Not just knowing about the truth, Amen. but knowing it Amen. is what sets you free. Amen. And, and he is the truth. Right. Yeah. So we can even go into that. You know, knowing that I need to know Jesus. Yeah. Right. Well, I he need is to the know Jesus because he, he is, the, is standard, the truth. Yeah, he is the standard right. bearer. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. There used to be a game show called mm -hmm. Truth or Consequences. Consequences yes. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And that is uh, that applies today. Yeah. The show's yeah. gone, yeah. but the truth is yeah. still there. Yeah. Right. And, and so are the consequences. Get, getting across to people the fact that in dealing with the truth, you don't have to fail or be afraid, I should say, or afraid of the truth because what the Lord is trying to do in giving truth is to protect you from the consequences Amen. of sin or the consequences mm -hmm. of evil. Right. But again, when people determine their, their own truth yes. and, and, and attach their belief system to that, they still are going to have to suffer the consequences of having deviated from the truth. Because mm -hmm. the consequences can't 
be seen many times Amen. until they're not right, right upon away. you. Yeah. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's not a fourth thought. There's not a, a thinking ahead. Yes, sir. And a lot of times, too, the consequences don't come immediately. For instance, like right. if, oh, yeah, if, 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 I, if, if I handed Pastor Bradley uh, a, a cup here and he drank it and fell over dead, and then I turned around, took that same cup and gave it to you and asked you to drink, you, you'd back away from it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But suppose it was like about six, eight, 10, 12 months between the time he ate it and died and mm -hmm. then I gave it to you. You, you, might, you might take it because you won't associate it necessarily with his death. Right. Yeah. So I agree with the consequences don't come immediately. Amen. Necessarily. Makes necessary. you wonder why sin isn't instantly painful. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's so Amen. true. Praise and it God. is not in many cases. In fact, it beckons you for more. Like, yes. Right. Has like a morphine effect yeah. that you just can't get yeah. enough of it while it's yeah. taking you down to a slow, mm. agonizing yeah. death of consequences yeah. without so much as Amen. a hint. Yeah. Especially when you're using it to suppress the truth. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. then it, 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 the dangerous part is that other people will buy whatever's being sold. And when you get more than one person that agrees with you, however egregious right. your actions or your attitudes are, yeah. then it just submits to you that I can continue on in this manner because here I have someone else walking with me in this thing. That's why it's so important, like Pastor said, to, to have this accountability in our lives because I can say I'm doing the work of God and, and I believe a certain thing. And if I can find somebody else that believes that too, it doesn't have to be the truth anymore. You know, it just got to be that, man, two or more together and we're walking and, the majority. and, and he's here, you know, the, yeah, majority. Yeah, the majority. But that's why the road's so wide that leads to yeah. destruction, mm -hmm. because there's going to be many on it. And, and sometimes if we're not careful where we're navigating at, we can find ourselves on that road. You know, but here's the good news. Jesus is everywhere and he never leaves us where he finds us. And even as we walk, he brings us back to that focal point, to that narrow road in him. But we need to do that for each other as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. oftentimes. I, I mentioned uh, before the break, we talked, uh, talked about the fact that, um, um, who was it, Pilate, yeah. was yes. interrogating Jesus and, and, and asked Jesus what is truth, and then yes. he turned and walked away Hallelujah. before getting a response before from Jesus happens. as to what is truth. Yeah. Uh, what, what a marvelous thing it would have been had he been able to just yeah, stay man. there and listen Come on, to man. the truth talk yeah. Come on. And, and tell him all about it. Yeah. Yeah. Speak. That, that, that would have been a marvelous thing. You know, choices have consequences. Uh -huh. We always teach that God loves us so much, He allows us to make any choice that we want to make except for one. He does not allow us to choose the consequences of our choices. Isn't that the truth? We can, we can make the choice, but we can't choose the consequences. That's right. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you need to preach that. I mean, that, that, that'll preach. That does preach. That, that'll preach. <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, Hallelujah. What about, let's take this, ministering let, to me. let's take this down to Washington. And I don't mean it in a, in a, in a partisan way at all. Mm -hmm. I, I happen to feel that there's enough corruption and sin on both sides of the political aisle to go around. Sure. But we know that in that city, in that city and, 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 and what they're dealing with, there is a quest for truth on several fronts. Would it be wonderful if the gospel could get in there amidst all of that searching for the truth to know what to do and what not to do, how to run this country, how not to run the country, how to deal with our constitution, how to interpret it properly, all those things. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the truth of God could get in there to be the standard bearer? Amen. Any comments, mm -hmm. gentlemen? I've got uh, what comes to my mind, Bill, is uh, out of Romans chapter one, verse 21, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, yeah. nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened and professing to be wise, they actually became fools. Hallelujah. Wow. That's, what it, that's what it is when you, you can know about the truth, Amen. but the difference is knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. When you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And I Amen. guess if God calls you a fool, you're a fool. That's right. Yeah. That's right. There's no way out. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's turn to another subject here. Uh, that w this is another comment that we had gotten in the mail from uh, a viewer. Uh, some pastors are beginning to say that the stories in the Bible are merely that, stories. In fact, I even heard somebody say the other day 
many ministers and scholars are beginning to say now that you can just forget about the first 11 chapters of the Bible. Do away with them. How say you, gentlemen? What's what about that? We got three minutes. Dangerous. Very. Dangerous. Very. Uh, toward the end of Revelation, it says, you'd better not add or take away Thank you. from this word. That's Amen. scary. Yeah. Amen. If you add you to the word, right. you add plagues to yourself. Exactly. If you take away from the word, you take away from your own prize and reward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think it goes right along with what we're experiencing in, in, in life, in, in, our, in our culture, uh, in our personal lives, and in the lives of those closest to us and around us. I believe that um, there's, a, there's a place where, where we're all seeking um, truth. And I believe that when we start looking at the things that are really true, that those are the things that make us uncomfortable. Because right, right away, truth requires change. It requires change. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just require change for those people who need to know the truth, yeah. but it requires change for us who need to tell the truth. You know what I mean? I, I think mm -hmm. the burden that becomes um, inherent upon us who would study the word and who would bring the word and who would try our best to get people to a place that want this thing more and more, the, the, the responsibility for all of us just, man, it's almost, it's almost overwhelming sometimes, you know? And um, I just believe that the truth does that, man. It, it, like you said, it makes us free because it's still we start hearing the truth, we'll just be comfortable in our own little mm -hmm. worlds. And, 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 and if, as long as everything's going okay, Sometimes that's enough for people. See, some people are hurting so much that they just want to feel better. You know, they just want to feel better, but God doesn't just want us to feel better. He wants us whole. He wants us healed. So if you can make me feel better, Mark, then Pastor Mark can make me feel better with something he says or something he teaches. I'm, a lot of times I'm okay to just rest in that place because at least I don't feel like I used to. But I don't know about how I can really be healed. You know, I don't want the whole truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. I just want enough truth to make me feel better with the yeah. lies that I live in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So you don't, you don't. You, in other words, you don't want the new birth. You want. No, you just want a little. No, you I just, just want to feel better. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, just, 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 just want to, you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll just put, the warmth of the womb. Yeah, I'll, not put, the new I'll birth. put my cross on and yeah, I'll drive yeah. my car and I'll put my bumper sticker on yeah, and, yeah. and I'll speak this word, this language, <laughs> the best I can. <laughs> but I don't want to really live it to that place yeah. that causes me to be an example to others. We've got to rightly divide the word of truth. And we'll have to end it there. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate you being with us and all the input you've given us this week and last week as well. That's our program for today. We'll be back again next week with another panel for more interesting discussion on life questions. So join us then. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.